Welcome back guys, and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on uh, using wind in Blender. I got a request for this uh, subject, um, so I'll be doing a tutorial on it, and the person also asked, um, is it possible to use wind in the Blender game engine? Um, the answer right away is no, not the same, not the same uh, way anyway that you would use wind in the normal Blender scene. You can't use... Um, actual real-time physics you can't just um, go ahead add a uh, you know wind you know adjust it and then uh, just use it right in the game engine it doesn't really work that way um, I don't have any experience at all with the game blender game engine but I know you can't use uh, the same kind of real-time physics in the game engine you have to use um, its own, it has its own basically own set of uh, physics if you go change it to blender game and here you have like the physics type you know the rigid body um, the only one I ever use is rigid body because I use it actually in my I use the rigid body bake it to um, animation curves and use it for like you know rigid body in the normal blender scene but in here you know you have soft body and um, I don't really know how to use it at all but I know the wind you can't um, just transfer everything from the normal blender scene to the blender uh, game engine I don't know maybe they'll have closer integration in the future but for now you can't do that. Anyway, I'm going to get right, get started and uh, go ahead and explore some of the settings of wind and uh, what you can use it for. Wind um, in Blender is, you know, pretty much like in the real world. Um, if you don't have anything to blow it uh, to blow against, you're not going to really see the wind. So you can't just add. Oh, you could if you just add wind into the scene. You're not going to. Nothing's going to happen, obviously. So I'm going to set up this little sort of a wind tunnel thingy so you can kind of see the different what effect the different settings have. I'm going to go ahead and hit A, select everything and just X, and just do everything. And I'm going to add a plane. Um, S10 to scale it up. Just to kind of give us a reference for a floor. Add another plane. Move it up a little bit. S7. I'm going to scale it down a little bit along the Y axis. Um, I'm actually going to make much, I'll make a flag later for wind, but this part is just a demonstration of the settings of the, uh, of the uh, wind object. I'm going to set up a particle system. Actually, I'll tell you right away, the wind um, works with cloth and soft bodies as well as both types of particles. Um, I'm, I, I don't know if it works with smoke or not. Um, since it works with particles and smoke uses the particles, um, for the simulation, you might be able to like you know affect the affect the particles in the smoke simulation, but it doesn't work with fluid. <laughs> I tried that; it didn't do anything. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up um, the particle system. Leave that emitter. I'm going to change the amount to twenty thousand and to two fifty, so it just keeps emitting particles until the end of the scene. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go down to my field weights and turn my gravity down to say uh, 0.7 just so the particles don't fall uh, too fast. And right away if you hit Alt-A you can see the particles just falling down. And that's actually a little bit too much. Uh, 0.6 Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> 0.5. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift a and force field wind. And right away you can see this little empty with rings around it appears. And right now it's pointing directly up. And as you notice, the particles aren't falling as far anymore. But we don't want it going that way. I'm going to hit R90 to point it sideways. And the gravity is too low now. So... Right away in this panel, you can see uh, there's not very that many settings. Um, obviously, its strength is you know the force of the wind blows. You increase it, it blows the stuff further. Um, noise is pretty important. It varies the strength uh, a small amount so that you get sort of puffs of wind. The wind is not so even. Um, without noise, it's just like a completely even, steady uh, stream of wind with no variation. So kind of like a, a super <laughs> steady fan that never changes. That never puffs or anything. It's always a constant stream. So if you're doing like an outdoor scene, you want to be like 
grass blowing in the wind or something, you want to turn the noise up so that, as you can see along this back edge, you know, the wind is uh, not coming out at even velocity the whole time. Um, absorption. Okay, this is pretty interesting. Um, if you have a collision object, say if I just go ahead and add, um, let me just add a cube, or drag it over here, and add collision. You can see force fields absorption right here. Um, if you enable absorption for this um, wind, and you say you turn off the absorption for this cube and put it in front of the wind, it'll actually block um, that area of the wind. So they'll basically like, uh, oh, I'm not going to show you because it takes a long time to uh, bake. But yeah, basically you can have like wind and then you can have if you, um, put collision and absorption then it'll basically block the wind. So yeah, this is the uh, sort of a uh, force field collision, if you will, um, as opposed to you know something with actually collision with particles or cloth or something. This is what you use if you want to have uh, collisions with force fields. All right, enough rambling. Let's get to it. Okay, fall off. Um, this is pretty easy to see once you actually turn it on. You turn on the uh, maximum fall off you can see immediately that the particles stop uh, being blown. But if you go ahead and change this distance and turn it up, you'll see um, immediately that there's a, a circle or a sphere rather that appears around the wind and that is a bug. <laughs> it's not supposed to be... Oh, actually, I don't know, is it? I don't know. I don't know why it does it. It kind of like splits the particles really evenly up there. I think that's not supposed to happen. So if you just enable it and re-enable it, maybe it'll work. Oh, now it's a force. Oops. Wind. I don't know. That's really weird, but yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. The shape of the wind. Plane, obviously, it just blows in a flat plane. Point, I guess. No, there it goes again. I don't know. That's. I don't think it's supposed to happen, but anyhow. Um, the maximum fall off, basically, if the bigger it is, you know, obviously, the uh, greater the influence of the wind will be. If you have it disabled, then it's just an entire, it's just a global sort of wind. The wind in the whole scene in that direction. Um, it doesn't even matter where you put the wind, as long as only in what direction that's facing. Face it down, up, you know, whatever direction it's facing, that's the wind, that's the way wind would be blowing in your entire scene. Um, unless you have a really enormous scene, you're probably not even going to really use the fall off that much. Because, you know, wind, if you're outdoors, you know, is. It always happens, uh, you know, wind, <laughs> it usually just, there's usually just wind in one direction. You can't just walk, or, well, you can't walk around and feel wind, you know, blowing in different directions at the same time, usually. Now, you can, you can put multiple wind objects in one scene and have, you know, I don't know, some sort of vortex or whatever, but um, unless you're doing actually like a wind source, you're probably not, you don't really need to use the follow. So now if you have like a, let's say, a fan or something, electric fan, yeah, you'll want to use the fall off because the wind is not global. All right, enough of that. You can see uh, how it's working with the particles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And just take the fall off for now. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just make a little flag thing. Um, okay, I'm going to add a cylinder. Just drag it up. Tab. S, Shift, Z to scale down on the uh, X, Y plane. S, Z to scale up the Z plane. Make it a little thinner. There we go. That's too thick still. All right, Shift, A, Mesh. I'm going to add a plane. Rotate X, 90. Put it over here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and edit mode. Scale it up. Um, actually, yeah. make it a little wider. Try to get the uh, golden rectangle here, so it looks the best. Oops. Yeah, it's all right. And I'm gonna hit A, W, subdivide. Actually, no. Before I do that, I'm gonna hit Control R. Um. It's kind of important when you do cloth and stuff that you have pretty square vertices, otherwise the collisions don't 
usually look that good. You can have a lot of like creasing or something. Turn this up to 10. And I'm going to go ahead and B for box select. Drag here, select these, go into my um, editing panel, and add a new vertex group. Let's call it pin and hit assign. All right, I'm going to go into my uh, physics panel, enable cloth, and just change it to silk to make it nice and heavy. And I'm going to click pinning. Here's the pin. So the pinning basically it pins the cloth. Um, wherever you have a pin, it won't move. So I'll just stay right there and the rest of it will actually uh, you know move <laughs> be using the physics so that's like if you want to do uh, like a, a piece of clothing or something that doesn't move like a, say a belt and a, a pants or skirt or something you'd pin it around where the belt is so it doesn't move collision um, I'm gonna enable soft collision because otherwise it'll just intersect itself too much it just looks kind of nasty um, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna save right now. <laughs> Bad. Don't ever do that. Always save your files. But I'm gonna do this pretty quickly. All right. So now, if you hit Alt A, you notice we have a flag. And as you can see, let's see what settings I have. Uh, the wind is already acting on it, but not very much. It's just kind of, you know. If I turn the strength of the wind up, you'll really see it. So like 200, 300. Wow, seriously? That's like really weak. Okay, let's try a thousand. <laughs> um... Normally the wind, I don't know, let's see, I might be forgetting something. No, there it goes. I don't know why this, let's see. Uh, hmm. There we go. The wind is working, it's just the cloth is so heavy that um, the wind doesn't do much to it. Okay, now as you can see, if I turn the noise down, um, you're not going to see it. Eh, it's not going to make much of a difference because it's just blowing so hard. But yeah, you always want to have the noise up if you want more uh, realistic, sort of uneven wind. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's really all there is to it. Wind is not something that's overly complicated. Um, as long as you just play around with the settings, um, you know, just try it out with particle systems, with cloth and with soft bodies or something, you know, you'll get the hang of it. It's not really um, something that takes a lot of, uh, you know, figuring out. As long as you, you know, just stick to some basic uh, principles, like, you know, well, I mean, you can just go in there and look, and it tells you if you just roll over what some stuff is. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out. But, uh, yeah, hope uh, this uh, little bit of a tip was helpful to you, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.